problem. Uh, my name is Sebastian Begri. I'm the founder of uh, AlphaCat. Um, AlphaCat is an uh, analytical method for cannabinoid testing. And so today I'm going to talk about cannabis analysis. That's why I'm, uh, I have a lab code to get you into the mindset of uh, chemical analysis. Um, so I don't know if you are familiar with uh, the different method of uh, testing for cannabinoids and other compounds, but that's what we're going to go into more details. So uh, we're going to go through the basic of cannabis, which I'm sure uh, most of you might know already what is it about. So the botanics, the cannabis trichomes, as we're going to dive in the trichomes, we're going to look at how to analyze what's the cannabinoids inside the actual trichomes, because the trichome is what will produce all the secondary metabolites from cannabinoids, terpenes, esketerpenes, and so on. We're going to talk about quality control system as a way to assure production and standardization, and um, strain characterization, as finally to explain you how all this information will suit for a medical cannabis program as a state of art. So first of all, we have the cannabis uh, family, which belong to the cannabinaceae, which is the smallest um, botanical plant family in the nomenclatures. So it's called the cannabinaceae, and there's only two plants. It's the cannabis and it's the hop. Uh, that humulus, that's what we use for beer, so it's funny because it's one of the most consumed plants in the world, as well as cannabis, and together they are cousin. So officially, according to the botanical expert, we are looking only at one type of cannabis, which is the cannabis sativa L. And from this strain, this cannabis plant, we have different chemovar or cultivar, depending on the, um, on the origin, so we call it cultivar because the biotype, so as the original was, was from Himalaya, as it went through a different place and latitude on, uh, around the planet, it also evolved into different characterization, and that's uh, why you have so many differences between cannabinoids, terpene, and so on, because was, that was the result of the adaptation of the plant to the environmental condition as um, a response for survival means. It's, uh, by the way, it's one of the only plants on the planet that can be grown at all latitudes. So it can be grown uh, out in the north in Siberia, up to the south in South Africa, um, and so on. We have of sexual plants, meaning that uh, you have distinct female and male plants. As we are mostly interested into the female plant, as this is the one that will produce most of the um, resinous substance that will contain the actual cannabinoid and the active compound. And uh, overall, we talk about 1,000 cultivar, but today there is more and more, and we can even talk about 2,000 cultivar even more. There is um, a lab in the US that have come up with a full uh, referential of all the variety around the market, as they call it the galaxy of cannabis. It's called uh, Philo Science. If, so if you are interested to it, you can come to me. I will give you the, um, the website. So when you look at the cannabis plant, what you see is the beautiful flower. But inside that flower, there is the trichomes. And the trichomes, it's actually the chemical machinery of the plant to produce the secondary metabolite that will give all the beneficial effect, as we know, for the different conditions as well. So inside these trichomes, you have um, a s different cells accumulation, and the top of it, uh, it's called the secretory reservoir. And this secretory reservoir, it's actually where all the compound will end up. So these two layers of cells, the rosette of gland cells and the terpenes together by the interaction of the sun will actually trigger to produce the cannabinoids. Okay, so when you look at the trichomes, what is mainly interesting is actually the, the head of the trichomes. And the head of the trichomes, uh, it's uh, mainly known, um, accumulated together like hashish. Hashish is actually the result of the head cut it, accumulated and precise as the resin. 
And that's also what we try to do when you are making an extract out of the plants to produce different products, either a CBD or THC product and so on. So when you look at the trichomes, you're looking at the bioavailability and the production of those secondary metabolites. Meaning that when you look at the aspect of it, it goes through different stage. So it goes from very clear head, transparent, to a more milky head, up to amber head. And this color change is actually the result of the maturation of the plant, the ripeness, just like an apple or a tomato. The apple, for example, it becomes red, green when it's unripe, and as it ripes, it becomes ring red. So it's a bit the same of principle. And it's very important because if you harvest it at this stage, you will not get the same amount and the same type of cannabinoids than if you harvest at this stage. Um, uh, the next slide we will go into it, but you will see that actually to go to get to CBD or THC, you have to go uh, first by the CBG. So you have like a, um, a chain of production of primary cannabinoids that will transform as the plant matures into the actual THC that is the our main interest or the CBD or the other cannabinoids, but the cannabinoids will be fully matures at this stage, at the amber stage. So, to give you an idea, when you look at the plants and if you want to look at the quality of the potential cannabinoid there is, the first things you need to look is to look with a microscope. You don't, have, you don't need to have like a microscope from the lab. You can get like simple microscope, the one that the jewelry maker used to look at diamonds. And you can see clearly those little head I was just showing you uh, a bit earlier. And the clearer the head are, then the better quality uh, you, you will find of the buds. Um, so there is also visual. So before you go into the chemistry and the analysis, you can always get a first grasp of the actual quality by just looking into it through the microscope. This is, so previously that was like a perfect cannabis flower that can be used for medical purposes because it looks very clean, the heads are very clear, you don't see any contamination, the chlorophyll is clean. These are actually the pastel, but that's part of the plant. And you can even see here pastel full of trichomes. So this is really, really high grade plants. If you f go for another one, this is something from the streets that is bushy, you see actually there is no more uh, um, trichomes, there is no more crystal, these uh, shiny things, it's gone. It just looks like some kind of dirt. Uh, I don't know, you actually don't even know what it looks like, but this is actual cannabis flower of very, very bad quality. And this is one is mainly due to the uh, contamination of mold. So fungi, like uh, mildew, have been attacking the trichomes. And so what you see here is actually the result of the trichomes being melt, like if it's been melted by a fire, but this is being melted or eaten up by the actual fungi, the mold. Um, and so when you see these kind of things in the microscopes, you say, okay, no, thank you. And you know that you don't even want to even smell it. It's uh, disgusting. So um, now we go to a bit more into the chemical aspect of the plant. So we went from plant physiology, botanics, to the actual now chemistry of the plants. So inside those trichomes, um, one of the most uh, abundant compounds that is being produced is the actual cannabinoids, the one that everybody talks about. So the main one, um, the two main ones are actually the CBD and the THC. Um, here what you see, you see for example like CBD, you see a seven, THC, you see a nine. This means that actual, actually this is a cluster. So THC is actually a cluster of nine derivative THC molecules. CBD is a cluster of seven derivative molecules of CBD. So when you're talking actually about CBD, it's inside the CBD that even more derivative of the same cannabinoid. So um, just to tell you that overall, you, we can count, and even now I think there's some new update from latest publication, uh, I think it's about like 120 cannabinoids difference, so it's very, very, very large. But today, 
um, for commercial reason, uh, the main compound that you will find in cannabis will be THC industry, and for industrial use will be the CBD. The other cannabinoids at the moment um, are, are there, but it's really something, it's a really a hunt for it. So like all the breeders, the people who actually go into breeding to select the right variety, uh, for right uh, specific symptoms, they will actually look in those different cannabinoids because by the interaction of each of them, you will get a different possible, possible uh, real leaf symptoms. So it's like a, like a medicine in terms of uh, uh, playing in, with the ratio. So THC and CBD one-to-one -one ratio, we don't have the same effect than in the THC strain by itself and so on. So this is really, uh, the starting base of knowing uh, what the effect will produce for you as the cannabis. When you use it, you know, okay, this one it will be good for the insomnia, this one will be good for uh, the pain, and so on. So this is mainly due to the cannabinoids. After, there is another part. Where is the actual biosynthesis? So the cannabinoids themselves in the plants are different than when you have it actually used. So that means that in the plant, fresh plant, it's not the cannabinoids uh, active, but the correct term is actually cannabinoid neutral. But to make it simple, basically when the plant is fresh, the cannabinoids will not, for example, THC, the THC acid will not get you high. So you need to have a decarboxylation step to remove the acid form from the actual cannabinoids which will make the cannabinoids active in the sense that it will produce the effect that you are looking for. Don't get me wrong, the acid part of cannabinoids also have very potential effects. Uh, today in the US, there is a big trend of doing uh, raw juicing, meaning they are taking fresh plants, they make a smoothie out of it, uh, to consume the acid form because it has very good uh, property for anti-inflammatories and uh, rejuvenating the cells. And another thing, so you go to the decarboxylation, this is what you are looking for for the effects. But if you go too much into it, you will go into a degradation step. Meaning that, for example, the THC will go into CBN. So uh, THC tetrahydrocannabidiol and CBN is cannabidiol. Cannabidiol is an actual uh, marker to know if the plant you use is old or is fresh. If you see CBN in your cannabis flower, I mean this plant must be at least a year old or maybe less, but usually about one year, that's when it gets really uh, detectable in a significant amount. Um, so it's also a way to drive the quality. Also, there's some, there some manufacturers that are looking for CBNs because they also have some properties. Um, so it's really after a question of uh, what you are looking for in product, for which reason you want to use it, uh, and so on. In terms of um, type of uh, matrix, meaning like where you can find those cannabinoids, you can find cannabinoids in different form. You can find them into the dry flower, of course, that's the natural state. But then after, you can actually use it as well where you extract the trichomes I just shown you to get into a concentrated version. Where in the concent so in the flower, let's say you will be around 20% THC, and when you go into the concentrate form, you will end up around 70% THC. People are looking for this kind of product, um, so they, don't, they avoid the residues of the chlorophyll of the plant, and they can also dose it better. Uh, meaning that with this kind of concentrate, you can use that to formulate different products and know after right, uh, exactly what the dose a patient uh, should get uh, to get the right effect. Because uh, some people, especially for CBD, they will take maybe a few drops and they think, yeah, it will make the, the job. But if they didn't take the right amount according to their body weight, for the symptoms, they will maybe not feel anything. So they need to take the exact quantity to reach the level of uh, efficiency. Otherwise, they will not do nothing and people will go like, oh, it's not good for me. And they say, no, cannabis is not good. But it's just because they didn't get the right dose. 
So uh, it's, uh, it's very important, that's why also uh, we are get, I'm presenting all this, because when you go into the testing, that's when you can dose it. So concentrate is very useful to produce derivative product, an oil, uh, pills, a suppository, or also something very common is edible. So people will make a small bakery of it, um, a pastry, and they will have a single dose, let's say they will put like 100 milligrams in a small uh, cupcake and they will know they eat the full cupcake and they will get the 100 milligrams of uh, CBD or THC, which from there they can build up uh, full treatment uh, during time. And the last uh, type of product, which is more medical oriented, it's called tincture, where you have an actual uh, maceration of the plant into an alcohol. Uh, it can be different excipients. But basically, there is the same principle. Usually, you, you can use either the flour that you infuse into the alcohol to get it out, or you can directly dilute the concentrate into an excipient like oil. That's what you see uh, being done for most of the uh, CBD oil on the market. They are taking uh, ham concentrated CBD and they dilute it into uh, actual oil. It could be coconut oil, it could be olive oil, uh, sunflower oil, depending on the brand and the product. So how to actually know how much of those, uh, for example, for the concentration, how much of this concentration you should put into the oil or the other excipient, that will be detected by the actual result of the analytical method. So there is two, these three main common analytical methods that has been validated by the United Nations of Drug and Crimes for cannabis noid detection. So the top one is uh, gas chromatography, uh, commonly called GC. Then you have the high pressure liquid chromatography, HPLC. And then finally, there is the method that, that uh, I'm going to get into more detail, and that's actually the method used by AlphaCat in our test kit. It's called C-layer chromatography. Basically, the principle of this is that you will uh, get from your sample and separate the different cannabinoids. And so the, dif the difference uh, between those uh, methods is the way they will difference, the difference, um, they will dif the way they will separate the cannabinoids, meaning that here you have an oven that will heat up your sample and at each temperature different compound will come out. And uh, so the lightest compound will be the first one to, to show up, so like terpenes. Then you have Sursky terpenes and then you get the cannabinoids. So it's a very, let's say, uh, you need some kind of uh, academic background to run this kind of machine. But basically that's what it does. It breaks down the uh, molecules inside your sample and you can detect it through that. This one is different principle. This is liquid pressure, meaning that you use a solvent to uh, eliminate and separate the compound as well. And so the less solvent you use, the smaller the molecule is, and so on, until you get to the full spectrum. From there, you can detect, according to the size of the molecule, what potential molecule it is. And finally, the T or C metal C layer chromatography, you, it's a combination of uh, a chemical reaction where you separate the cannabinoids and into a visual uh, way to um, detect them. So when they are being separated, after you need to be able to see them, so we are using a dyeing agent, a colorant, that will actually bind to the, recept to the cannabinoids that is in your sample. So when you look at our results, you see some spots, and for each spot will be the cannabinoids. If you don't see the spot, that means the cannabinoid is not there. Um, so back in the days in 2009, when I started the research on this uh, project, there has been a group in Leiden, a university in the Netherlands, that actually made uh, a study to look if the spot you will obtain from the C-layer chromatography is proportional and could actually be quantified. Um, because C-layer chromatography is very extensive, extensively used in the medicinal herb industry for detecting if the compound is present or not, because there's a lot of scam in terms of selling some kind of powder that they say yeah, it's a uh, ginkgo biloba, but inside you don't actually have the, the active ingredients. So they, were, they are using CLC just to see if the compound is there. Uh, to validate. So one big question was, is it also uh, are we also able to quantify it? And this paper showed that you can. 
So the cilia chromatography uh, is one uh, is the oldest uh, analytical method for uh, chemical compound. It was extensively used in the 50s uh, before the machine come up. Um, and this TRC method that we use is, is being specifically designed for cannabinoids because for different compounds you will have different protocols. And the way it works is that you have basically here your sample origin and uh, with a solvent you will have a migration of the samples through the plate and by doing the separation each of the compounds will come up to a different position. So the smaller the molecule, then the smaller the distance of migration. The more heavier, then the more time you will actually get to separation, so the higher the position will be. Um, so that's also why in our test kits, you don't necessarily need internal standards. So I don't know if, uh, but just to give you a bit of background, when you want to analyze a uh, compound, you need to have a reference to that compound to be able to quantify. So you put, like, let's say, 50% of that compound, and then you, when you look at the peak, you can compare um, from this 50%, what is the actual ratio of what you found? And that's how you actually do the quantification. So that means for analytical reason, you will need pure THC, pure CBD, and the big issue is, big, is THC because obviously you need all the licenses, uh, deal with uh, paperwork, governmental officials. Uh, so here you don't actually need THC because we know from the study that the THC will always end up in a specific position after I will show you how it's, uh, the result is being shown up on the TRC method. Um, so the TRC method as well uh, is being used in all monographs uh, of botanical plants. So monograph is actually what herbalists use to know how and which part of the plant is being interesting for healing purposes. So a monograph will tell you which part, what it will produce of compound, how to extract that part, how to analyze it, and also how to also produce it in terms of even cultivation or some plants that they don't even, they are not even domesticated. The people still go out and pick them in the wild, but it's because it's specific um, plant and they are only being found somewhere. So in any case, this method has always been the first analytical method for referential and to know if we are in the right place or the right direction. So it's, very, it's a good indicator, basically. Um, and it's been also uh, reported and references in the American Herbal Pharmacopeia of cannabis. So in the US, they actually uh, publish a monograph that explains for uh, phytotherapy purposes how to use the cannabis plant. So this is our, how the results will be presented or revealed when you use our method. This is like a perfect uh, result in the sense that you have all the main cannabinoids that our test kits can detect. You have the CBD, the THC, CBG, CBC. We can also detect the CBN, but in, as it's very old as for all samples, and it basically will appear around here just between CBD and THC, and the color will be very dark purple. So not only you can see which cannabinoid is by the position, but also you can know which cannabinoid it is by the color of the spot. Okay? Uh, and as you can see, each cannabinoid have many types of property. So that's what I was saying before, that uh, for um, different medication, you can uh, play around or looking for different spectrum, whether you just want the CBD or you want it with the THC or you just want the full spectrum. So it's very complex, actually. That's why there is uh, still a lot of study. Actually, the cannabis plant is one of the most studied plants uh, right now in the academic field. Um, and I'm not even talking about the endocannabinoid system and so on, because this is like the number one uh, topic right now um, for neurological uh, study. Uh, okay, we will pass this one. This was a small video to show you how the method works, but it's not working, so I will just pass this one. Um, this is a more extensive way to actually look 
into the sample you use. So I was telling you uh, early in the beginning that you first need to look into the trichomes with a microscope to see the quality if the trichome is being intact. So basically that's why here you will have a pictures of the flower because that will actually indicate what type of flower uh, is, like if the flower is looking good, that means you, are, you have more chance to actually have a good product uh, with the trichome pictures and so here, you have also different types of smells. The smells uh, are characterized by terpenes. And terpenes, we are now finding out that they actually have a full effect on the plant itself. Uh, we call it the entourage effect. Uh, I could do full lectures about it, but it's not the point. Just the point is to, to, to also know that if you have two plants that test the same amount of cannabinoid, let's say you have one plant is indica, uh, plant is like 15% THC, a sativa plant is 15% THC. So it's the same amount, but one will put you down to sleep and the other one wants you to do some activities. And so in that case, the, the difference is actually the terpenes. So that's what makes really uh, after the full spectrum. So, uh, and this is actually still going on in terms of uh, laboratory analysis. Uh, the professor Ethan Rousseau, for the people who may know, um, in the US is coming now with new type of certificate that includes cannabinoids and terpene analysis and together is, is uh, talking now about not anymore about a strain or a cultivar or a variety is now talking about a chemovar meaning that is uh, um, the distinction is due to the chemotype so that means the actual compound found in the plant so it's not it's not more anymore about uh, indica sativa hybrid it's about uh, the ratio of cannabinoids so you have three types one one to one ITHC or ICBD, so that gives you three types of chemovar, and then from there you will have the difference that will actually be pinpointed by the terpenes. So just to come back on the THC and just so to come back to the basic, if you will go out there and you need to choose which strains you want, before getting into terpenes and so on, you can already go into single cannabinoids THC. Um, this one was actually, I've been to Jamaica and I've, I made a, a small tour on the island just to collect some samples to see what was the quality. Unfortunately, I was a bit disappointed because the quality was not there, but this is due to their uh, practice of uh, guerrilla style, meaning that it uh, uh, was a non-controlled environment, they had to dry very fast, so, and it's a very humid environment, so they got a lot of mold, meaning that the mold brings down a lot of the THC that they the plant should have, but you see there is a huge difference from 16% THC to 2% uh, THC. Uh, so if you had to choose a strain, if you had to choose something mild, you will actually go for maybe something that is 10%, so that means that all these uh, plants that are situated here should be maybe the one of your choice, okay? And then after, if you want a bit more, that, so it's, it's really a way to target what you want in this, uh, especially in this industry that is so many products, so many uh, chemovar, so many uh, cannabinoids. So like this, you can actually grab a first ID. And that's why we recommend everyone that are purchasing a product or that are going to, uh, into the cannabis industry to, if you are buying from supplier, to always ask certificate of analysis to actually see first if they are selling is uh, what they say and also to, to understand what's there because for example in the CBD oil industry some CBD product will have a little bit of THC just below 0.2 and some will have no THC at all but this could uh, have an impact for example just on the regulatory framework where it could be more accepted for uh, regulation of zero THC then a little bit more and so there are things to see also as well, some of the CBD oil they will sell, they will probably don't tell you as well because today is more marketing and for the people it's a lot of information, but they will also contain a little bit of CBG um, and a little bit of CBDV. So, uh, and that together may give a better synergy, so that's why sometimes you hear the word full spectrum, 
because they contain more than just the CBD itself. So sometimes because they have a little bit of THC, sometimes because they have a little bit of CBG, sometimes they have a little bit of everything. But, and that's very important to know because then you, you see what kind of product is it. And along the time also you can make sure that it's standards. Because when you are a, a patient and you use this for one year or even one month, you need that every time you buy is the same product so you have the same effects uh, coming in. In terms of um, so strain, I go back to like more uh, uh, popular term because uh, Chemovar is like 2017 discovery in terms of uh, being practiced. So until now we keep the word strains, but strain is something that actually being used for more for more the bacteria. Actually, that's why it's not that correct. But anyhow. Um, when you use the TRC method, you can already get a characterization by the chemotype, by the cannabinoid in presence, and that uh, will give a very uh, first-hand method that is right now being used globally as a standard, as because this is always the same method and you don't need the standard. So that means if you will do a test with our test kit here and a test with our test kit in Japan, make sure you know how the protocol goes. Technically speaking, should be if the same sample it should be the same results. On the other hand, if we are going into a laboratory with proper gas chromatography, and it's a two different lab, some lab in Greece might use a certain protocol, the lab in Japan will use another protocol, and they might end up, even if it's the same sample, with a different result on the cannabinoid levels. Uh, and this is really, um, you can see this on the large scales in the US, uh, because they, no, they have another issue is because most of the lab, they cannot get the THC standards, uh, because this is FDA approval, so they need to get special accreditation, which uh, um, at the mo until now, now it's changing because there has been the, the bill farm being voted by Trump recently, but until now, only one lab in the US could actually get the pure THC. So that means that all the other, they were playing with some other uh, kind of compounds called squalane that is very similar to THC to use as internal standard to look at the difference and to quantify. So anyhow, uh, there's huge difference between labs. And our method, that's why our method, we say it is recognized standards because, as I say, you can take our kit anywhere in the world and if you have the right protocol, you can actually compare with your previous uh, test. Uh, it's a very good method for in-house testing, meaning when you are a producer of uh, uh, CBD oil or THC flower, CBD flower, whatever product you are going to produce with cannabis, we go into a standardization of production where you need to be compliant with uh, certain standards of quality. And the most quality, I mean, the quality one aspect is the reproducibility. And we go with a production flow where at different stage you need to show that you run the test and that your test was according to, to your standards. So you can actually have a final product which is the same that previous time. So that means that in that production flow, you run the, uh, a large number of tests to always make sure, uh, for example, when you take the plant, you test the plant, you say, okay, I have 20%, okay, now I can put this into the extraction. When you get the extraction, you expect something like 70%, so you make a check, you say, okay, I'm at 70%, so I can take that and I can go and start to formulate. Um, and so this kind of test, actually because this is uh, in-house, meaning that you don't have to show an official um, the, for the certificate to be commercialized, but it's for you to know that you are doing the right things. So it's a good way to actually cut the cost of a big laboratory mach uh, testing machine, where you usually spend around one to three hundred euros a test, and in our method you will spend about ten euros a test. So the cost savings are, are huge, and, uh, and the result in a sense of production is the same, because what you want is that, is that you have the right indication that you are in your range. Um, so uh, the TRC method, the alpha test kit, can also be used for in-house production facility, whether it's flour, or if it's extract, or if it's like a final product, or all the chain from seed to sell. 
Uh, the most advantage is that it's a uh, low cost efficiency, it's very versatile tool, so that means you can really get the aspect of it very fast. Uh, and uh, you can test um, many types of products, you can test the oil, you can test the flour, you can test ashes, you can test e-liquid, most of the product that will contain cannabinoids. Um, and you don't need a PhD background to actually make a test. Uh, every a normal person that is uh, a little bit um, smart that uh, understand like it's like a cooking basically huh? it's a recipe so you just need to follow the process and if you are uh, meticulous then there should not be an issue of course maybe a mistake will happen but that's all right but after one two mistake not more you will you actually get to the point and you f and then after it's actually completely changed because that means you can go and in half an hour you know exactly where you're at. When you deal with another lab, you have to send the sample, get, wait for the result, and once you get the result, and that sometimes at base scenario, it takes 48 hours. Some of the lab in the US, that's what they advertise, but in the current situation, it usually takes two weeks to one month. That's the, that's the reality. This is the actual pharmacopoeia. Uh, from the American uh, Herbal Pharmacopoeia Association, where they talk about the nomenclatures, uh, the identification, commercial source, how to handle it, how to dry, how to harvest, how to pack, store, everything, so you can ensure the quality system there. And there in the analytical method, I'm not really sure that you can see, but the first method is a C-layer chromatography, so the TRC, what we've been talking about, what we use and develop for AlphaCat. Then they're talking about the HPLC and the GC. So the two other machines I just showed you previously. Um, this you can actually uh, purchase it online or maybe you can even find some PDF uh, copy. But it's very handy if you are really getting to the medical cannabis that gives you the, the, the right idea of how you should operate at every stage of production. Um, this is also a great tool for patients and for physicians. That means that they will, uh, with these tools, as the current situation, unfortunately, there is no uh, medical cannabis available as it should be, like a Greek production at least, and I don't, I'm not sure if you're already importing medical cannabis from other countries. But I will say that 90%, maybe 99% of the patients right now actually are getting it from the black market. Uh, may, which make it very, very difficult for physicians to tell them uh, how to use it because a physician works on a dosely basis. So they need to know, okay, you take first 50 milligrams of CBD three times per day, uh, you mix it with 20 milligrams of THC, and so on. So that's how they work. And when you get your cannabis from the black market, and say, ah, I have cannabis, uh, well, how much uh, I smoke one gram? No, no, no. You have to, first you don't smoke it, you can eventually vaporize it, but for the doctors, you need to know how much THC or CBD you have in that product. And, and that's why the test, our test kits can give that in half an hour. And like this, the doctor already know which cannabinoid is there, have an idea of the amount, and tell the patient how to use it. Um, and so it tells about the ratio, and also after, if you go down the line, you can even talk to regulators and saying to them, like, look, I'm treating a thousand patients, uh, I give them uh, 20 milligrams THC per day, they reveal their uh, insomnia, pain, uh, whatever symptoms they had, but he has means and uh, uh, data to talk about, not just like, yeah, he took one gram of cannabis uh, every day and it was fine, but that, because that doesn't mean nothing. So, um, I'm almost done. The quality system, so it's uh, for consumer safety, medical supervision, patient pathology adequate for treatment, it can help authority regulators, and of course for cultivators also to go into the right time for harvesting. So I thank you for your attention, and if you have any questions, feel free, we have time. Yes, uh, she will pass you the microphone. I think I have a pretty loud voice, I, guess. I think they can hear me. Uh, my question is, a kit like this, how many tests will allow you to do? Yes, so we have uh, two types of uh, test kits. Actually, we have three types. So the test first and test kits, we have one is called the mini kit. You make eight tests with it. 
that, it, that costs about uh, it's 109 euros. And per test, that makes it about 13 euros a test. Then we have a regular test kit, so it's a bigger version where you will make 40 tests. This one costs about 339 euros, so that's come up about 9 euros a test. And then we have a more advanced solutions, which we call it the mobile lab. That's, uh, so this solution is about 6,000 euros, but is more than just uh, testing. This is the actual complete set to get into practice, meaning that you, you've seen uh, the chemical process when you buy the kit. You have small plastic pipettes, you have gloves, you have the basic things to run your, your test fast. But the, the truth is that you also, and that's, you need a scale. And these scales need to be as precise as one milligram. You need to have a micro pipette that is precise at one microliter precisely, because you're dealing with very fine quantities. So the more precise equipment you have, the more precise your test can be and reproducible can be as well. And the final things that can be a source of error is, of course, the technicians. So that's why when you get the mobile labs, actually come personally to the client location and give two days trainings to make sure they will have at least two persons from their staff that can operate the process perfectly. So every time they will make tests, it will be reproducible. This is very robust. Uh, they, so the only uh, factors that can change that is the technician, the scales, and the pipette. But this, if this is done properly, which can be done very easily when you have trained technicians. After uh, even 20 tests, it's uh, straightforward and works perfectly. So that's the three solutions. So you have the mini kits for eight tests, about 13 euros a test. You have the regular kits, 40 tests, around nine euros a test. And then you have the mobile app solution, which is about 6,000 euros, but that's, you can make 400 tests. So that makes it about 14 euros a test. So it's roughly the same as the mini kit. But the advantage is that you get all the accurate equipment, you get the training, and when you finish, the refill will cost you 4 euros per test. So it's very cost effective. Uh, and after, depending on the scenario you are putting yourself, if you are a producer, you will save cost from the big uh, lab cost, as I say, is about 100 to 300 euros. If you are a patient association, it's a great means to actually uh, get all the products used by the patient being tested. So if you have a representative physician working with this patient, then they can actually know how to operate on which product, uh, select the producer. Uh, and this can be done quite fast. Uh, we've just educated people that are clever, no need of uh, seven years of uh, study, like running a lab with the HPNC. I'm sorry, I didn't understand from the test results, uh, the sample image. Does it give you just the, the presence of the compounds, or does, does it actually give you like a percentage yes, yes. of... It, like, because uh, you're supposed to be under a certain level of THC. Yes. Do you know if, if it's a certain percent, or is it just whether it's present or not? Yeah, very good question. Um, uh, so, you can actually quantify them. Actually, I didn't put the pictures, but if you get into the kit and you can come after to our stand, I can show you more in details. We made the actual ruler that uh, it's, uh, by the line, basically, there's a proportions between the concentration of the cannabinoids and the size of the spot. So the bigger the spot will be, the higher the concentration. So we, we have a ruler that we provide with the test kits that help you to actually size the, the, the spot. And from there, you have a direct reading of the percentage. Yes. All right, so thank you very much. And if you have some questions, come to our stand 40.